Hi hobbyists, it's Jim. Um, quick little video here. Um, I've got a uh, gearhead motor that I bought from Servo City. Um, they call it the Robot Zone. It's an economy gear motor. This one happens to be 56 RPM at 12 volt. And uh, I had a couple of issues with it. Um, nothing wrong with the motor really. A couple of things I did that screwed it up. Um, number one is the, uh, I'm going to take this one apart and I've already had it apart and figured out how, how to put it back together, but it's got metric screws, that's what these two holes are here and here to mount it, and I happen to have some three millimeter metric screws, but they were too long and I didn't realize they were bottoming out on one of the gears inside, so I screwed up and uh, broke a tooth off of one of the gears, um, but, uh, and I kind of did all that trying to figure out um, whether or not I could re-drill the holes. Um, here's basically the can motor and the pinion there and then that's just the mount to, uh, to screw this to the motor head. And then here's the gear head and inside of here there are five gears and this is how they're getting the gear reduction on this. Um, I don't know, it doesn't say what this, what this can motor turns at but I'm sure it's pretty high RPM. And so then you've got a whole stack of five gears on this side of the can or of the gear head, and it just goes. Uh, the pinion drives a big gear, and then the small end of that gear drives the next gear. Um, there's a little plastic spacer here that you need to keep. Make sure you don't lose that. It goes on the last shaft, trying to even out the the length there. And so anyway, these gears swap back and forth. So you've got a uh, big gear that's driven by the little part of this gear. And then it's got, it's a double gear, I don't know what that's called. But then the small end drives the big part of this gear. And then the small end of that gear drives the big part of this gear. And the small end of that one drives the last one on this side. I don't know if I can get it out of there now. It goes clear through, and maybe you can see that in there. It goes clear through the bulkhead here, and it drives. There's two two pins there, and they'll come out. One of them might get stuck in there, so if you're dealing with that, keep that in mind. So carefully pull that apart. Now we can see that this one, there's two of these, and they've got a longer, small gear. This this part, this gear, the part of it is longer than the rest of them. You can see that here. So here it's pretty equal, pretty thin on both the smaller and the bigger diameter of gears. There's two of these with the, the longer, smaller pinion part. And so that one goes through that hole. And one of those shafts goes through that big hole. The other shaft goes through that small hole. And I'll put this all back together here for you. So you can see that, but then uh, the lot the there's the second gear with the long pinion part. It's what I'm going to call this the pinion and that the uh, spur gear. There's the two shafts and there's where they tuck into the to the main bulkhead there. And then this is the final drive. It's just got one gear pressed onto the shaft that has the flat. And this is the four millimeter size here. So what I wanted to do, and the reason I screwed it up in the first place, was I kind of took it apart and I didn't know what I was doing when I put it back together. I wanted to drill these two holes out here. These holes with the counter bore are for these long screws, and that's what holds that, and it goes through this, and it holds it, and it screws into here and here, and holds the whole thing together. So I wanted to to drill out and re-tap these two holes to standard um, 632 is what I did and this one is actually I've done that already um, it's just barely big enough um, you don't want to torque down on it. you can see here that when I tapped it uh, the tap was right into the side of it and it shouldn't make any problem you want to make sure though if you do this that you clean out the, the filings so you don't end up with a bunch of crap in there and, and wearing out the teeth prematurely so anyway, um, you could do that. You could pull this out of there. You can leave these in there. The one of them seems like one comes out pretty easy. They're, they're both stuck in there now. It's not a real tight fit. Um, they'll come out. Uh, but you could pull this out 
I drilled these out with the, the uh, tap size drill for 632 and then I just tapped them 632 and then you want to put it all back together so that um, the two shafts start with one of these and here you can see the tooth the busted tooth on that gear right there and so I'm gonna try to use this I don't know how long it'll last but I'm putting it on first because that's the slowest place um, this this is actually a 56 so this shaft turns 56 rpm and I think these gears I, I tried measuring them and, and I didn't count the teeth but I think they're about 3.3 to 1 so any of you math majors out there want to figure this out for me uh, leave a comment but 3.3 to 1 I don't know what size the final drive that's pretty big there it's bigger than the rest of them so I didn't even factor that in and I didn't really figure out uh, what the what the reduction is but 3.3 to 1 for each one of these sets and there's one two three four five six of them not counting the final big gear that's on the main shaft so anyway let's put it back together there's the the first one with the longer pinion part make sure it meshes down in there then I think and if I do this wrong we'll figure it out real quick one of these and it meshes into the big part small part then this goes on a certain way I think the the label went towards the motor and here you can see there's the small hole and the big hole goes in like that and make sure it lines up good. I think maybe that gear doesn't go in there. Yeah, it doesn't go in there. So just just that one. Then put this on there like that. Then the second tall gear goes in that big hole. Slide it down in there. And if I turn this shaft now, you can see that, that gear on this side of the bulkhead turning. So we got that. And I can feel that the tooth in there is causing me trouble. I'll pull this back apart. Get my little spacer. Where'd you go? Pull that apart. Let's see if I got everything right here. That feels right there. And maybe I had that the wrong way. I think it goes that way. Through there. Tall gear. Yeah, that feels a little better. I think it's, and part of it's because these aren't um, held in place yet. So, tall gear, and they all go on this way. Small end first. So it should ride up against that one. Then another one over here. Make sure it settles down in there. Looks like that one's a little tall. Yeah, there we go. And one over here on the one closest to us. Oop. Awful tiny. And the last one over here. And since these are all the same, the the diameters are the same. It doesn't matter uh, what order they're in. Now, um, I don't know if they're all like that. and I don't know how they change the RPM. So maybe this 56 RPM motor is unique and and it's like that but uh, I'm gonna get some other ones and I'll be sure to let you know so let's see what I do with my spacer it goes on here probably getting way out of the frame sorry about that so the little spacer goes on there to basically leave about the same amount of shaft exposed on those two shafts and then you can see two little holes let me point them out to you where those pins go there and there and then it's got to that last gear has to mesh up on the pinion of the motor itself and sometimes you gotta wiggle it around you can see there it's not wanting to go on and just a little bit of wiggling and if it if it gives you a hard time don't force it here um, like this one's not wanting to go I'm gonna pull it back apart carefully so the stuff doesn't slide off and I'm gonna try to turn that motor a little bit and try it again there it goes so just getting that mesh lined up on the last gear so that's it then the two long screws go in the counter bore and we'll just snug those up 
and I did grease that a little bit the last time I had it apart right before I started the video so otherwise if you take it apart there will be grease in there if you're real careful and do this in a clean spot and then get the chips out of there if you tap it for standard thread like I did make sure you keep it clean you might want to clean it out with some motor cleaner and then re-grease it um, here's the, the metric three screw I use and it's way too long make sure that you're using a screw that doesn't go any deeper into the case than right there because it'll hit one of those gears and that's what I did to screw this one up and then here's the here's a number eight or a number six I'm sorry uh, see if I got a driver for that that's not it and that's not it well anyway so that's what I'm using is a, a 632 screw and so you can see that goes right in there and it's short enough so then for my the flange I'm using to mount it then I'm good now but with that busted tooth I know I'm gonna have trouble so let's plug this baby in and see if it uh, probably hear that that one gear with the busted